Well, hello, I'm Steve Meyer with Accenture Technologies Data and Applied Intelligence Group. I lead our MongoDB and NoSQL architecture and delivery practice in North America, and I'm excited to present here at MongoDB Live to share an exciting new capability we've developed for migration of relational database systems into MongoDB. We at Accenture care deeply about data migrations, especially as part of the transition for our clients to the cloud. Through hundreds of client data system migrations, we know firsthand the struggles that client teams face with their data migration projects. In fact, Harvard Business Review estimated that nearly seven out of eight data migration programs either fail outright or significantly exceed their plan, budget, or schedule. And none of us like to be in those kind of projects. We've also learned that projects that transition data into MongoDB aren't immune from these effects, with nearly half of all MongoDB development projects, including some form of data migration from relational technologies. So this concept of how to transform relational data into MongoDB represents an important topic that gets the eye of leadership across the organization. I certainly don't need to spend a lot of time with this group reviewing why my migrating from relational technologies to Mongo makes sense. Accenture's found that Mongo provides a significant performance boost to our development teams through the improved developer productivity by integrating with modern DevOps and CICD develop delivery pipelines and doing all of this often at lower cost than the common alternatives. So let's review why projects struggle with these transitions. I won't address individually each of these tough questions that come with a data migration project, but on closer inspection, they boil down to three key areas. First, what analysis do we need to conduct ahead of the transition to ensure it's successful? Second, during the transition program, what can we do to make the process more efficient and improve the probability of success for the team? And third, after the data is migrated, how can we reconcile and validate to ensure we got it right? If you've worked on data transition programs, you've lived these issues just like our delivery teams. As a result, Accenture analyzed our many years of experience with data migration programs to create a suite of accelerators that help with data migrations between relational platforms. We then enhanced this capability to include support for relational to Mongo transitions. An in-depth discussion of our full smart data transition capability requires more time than I have today, but as you can see from the data journey depicted here, Accenture brings a suite of multiple assets to help project teams across the planning, modeling and transport, and the validation phase of a migration program. For our discussion today, let's focus on one of the assets that is customized for data migrations into MongoDB, the smart data mover, highlighted here in purple. This slide shows a very, very high level summary of the smart data movers connection with the various phases of a data migration program. Since a full demo of the product takes longer than we have for today's session, let's look at the flow inside smart data mover using some sample screenshots and show how this tool helps developers and architects get the job done more effectively. The toolkit supports login and password security model that allows multiple developers and teams to work in the same environment, but control access to projects and the underlying data as you would expect in a modern application. After logging in, the developers presented with the menu of available smart transition assets across the pre-transition, on-transition, and post-transition phases. Here we'll select the smart data mover asset under the on transition phase, since most of our work will focus on the relational to NoSQL modeling effort. Smart Data Mover supports transitions both from on-premise to cloud or between cloud platforms. For today's run through, we'll look at migrating from an on-premise Oracle platform to a MongoDB Atlas instance hosted on Amazon Web Services. First, we'll select the on-prem to cloud option. Next, we'll choose the source platform. As I said, we'll, we'll uh, use Oracle for this example. Choose a cloud platform and then select the target data system on the cloud. And here we'll use MongoDB on AWS. 
Note on this slide, I've obscured the actual selection options due to logo restrictions and other arrangements with our partners. We'll now move on to the Discover Data stage. There's a lot going on for this page, but this is where we would trigger the execution of the analysis phase. The tool actually profiles and extracts data from the source to use in our remodeling effort. And the view here shows how it looks after running the analysis stage providing a number of ways to look at the source database. In this case, we're using a small sample Oracle database based on the TPCC transactional industry benchmark model standard. We can choose to select our tables for modeling in several ways, either by size or by frequency of use in the queries. Here, all of our tables are small, so we'll just select the small category and proceed to our modeling phase. This view gives us more useful metadata about selecting the source objects we want to model in MongoDB. Since in MongoDB, a collection can contain data from multiple objects in a relational sense, we typically will construct our output MongoDB collection model in multiple phases. For now, we'll select all of the source tables and elect to start a new data model or project. And here's where the design magic gets started. We'll spend a minute looking at this view. On the left side, the system generates an entity relation diagram from the source based on the source table and foreign key relationships. If there are inferred relationships, these would have to be made manually. But the important attributes of primary and foreign keys are clearly identified so the modeler can better understand the source and what defines a unique record from the source platform. On the right side is where we model the data as we want it to look in MongoDB. At the top are selectors, enabling us to choose a primary table that will serve as the base grain for records in our Mongo collection. We can then add multiple secondary tables as needed to reflect the array or hierarchical structures inside the MongoDB record model. So for this example, the developer is building a collection based around customers and their orders. The customer table becomes the primary and orders is assigned as the secondary table. We can choose multiple fields from each and as we add field items, they're added to a collection viewer structure visible in the middle right side of the window. As we add fields, you can see that the hierarchy gets built automatically in the JSON model and that Mongo data, MongoDB data types are automatically assigned. This data type assignment is based on a configuration file developed in conjunction with MongoDB engineers and is specific to each type of source data platform we intend to migrate over into MongoDB. Note that this template can be customized and later we'll also see how to override the default data type selections. When we're satisfied with our collection model, we save it as a configuration in the system, and we can create multiple projects or enable variants of the model for different environments or different uh, structure or, or even different um, uh, samples if we, uh, if we choose. So as the project matures, each target collection is defined individually and can then be called backup for edits, removed, or importantly, we can test it out with some sample data and see how well the source data aligns to our model. So let's see how this works by taking a look at our customer orders collection developed previously. When we preview the collection, we see 10 sample documents of the primary mapped with up to five nested elements from each secondary table we selected with the configuration. If we select one of the sample records, it expands to show us a nested view of the record elements as a more human readable JSON structure. This view gives us a quick way to test whether the source data looks as we'd expect in our output model allowing us to spot any data type issues or other problems in the hierarchy. Note that all of these intermediate stages execute against JSON objects as a flat file. This helps reduce any chatter in and out of MongoDB until we're ready to execute the load. Once we're satisfied with the sample structures, we're ready to execute a migration into MongoDB. 
we click the proceed to transport button and complete the remodeling. Our transport page now provides the status on our migration process flow. Behind the scenes, we're using PySpark code executing against a configurable number of Spark worker nodes that are dynamically created and destroyed after the migration process. This helps give a significant amount of parallelism, but prevents a lengthy and complex manual management for the Spark worker nodes. But this screen gives us at a glance our status, and since some very large migrations may take 30 minutes to an hour or more, the status is updated manually by clicking the update status button versus having to continually poll against the, the target process. For this small example of just a couple of gigabytes, the conversion takes only a minute or so. When completed, the st migration status chart turns green and if multiple collections were processing, the status of each would show individually. And the job summary displays on the right side, including source metrics and key indicators through the process. This is also the stage where we perform important validation checks against the data and would show these in the right hand uh, job status pane, including do the source target counts match the target counts exactly to the row level for both primary and secondary objects in the output Mongo collection? Does each field value in the output match exactly for its data type conversion to the source? Are any MongoDB documents found to exceed the 16 megabyte limit? A summary of the min, max, and average nested object counts also is produced to help understand if a document structure proves too unwieldy for practical usage. While we know about the 16 megabyte limit in MongoDB, in practice, we never want to get anywhere close to that. The, the statistics we gather help validate and ensure the developer knows exactly what they're getting into with the selective design. And other statistics like the overall document sizes also are collected and available for review. At the end of the process, we can use MongoDB Compass or another query tool to review the output data and perform any other validation checks or downstream aggregation pipelines we may want from inside MongoDB. As we near the end of the presentation, however, I do want to point out one additional feature we skipped over in the initial walkthrough, and that relates to the field naming and data type overrides for the source. Let's see how we help manage this important concern for the migration team. While it didn't show in the earlier screenshot for our remodeling page, there is another selector to enable the download and re-upload of a configuration template file specific to field and data type overrides. If we download the field template, we see an Excel view that the entire source metadata at the database and schema, table and field level are exported for us. We can then use Excel to apply formulas or other manual overrides to both the field name or the data type used for that field. Note that this step is not required, but merely enables more flexibility for developers when converting what typically are more cryptic abbreviated field names, often littered with underscores or dashes in relational databases into the more human readable JavaScript naming convention favored by MongoDB. This example shows the renaming of just a couple of elements for demonstration purposes, but this technique allows a complete and custom remap of names as would be appropriate to your application modernization effort. As a side benefit, if completed, this template also provides an extremely handy data dictionary or glossary to compare the field naming between the relational and NoSQL version of the application. This is a critical piece when remodeling the application to use more modern programming languages and skipping the traditional SQL interfaces uh, used by legacy applications. This final screen capture shows the modified fields from our field naming template applied in our compass output following the transport execution. And that wraps up our short walkthrough of the smart data mover capability. As I conclude today, let me say thanks to MongoDB for the great support they provided us as a partner and adding Mongo as a target platform for our smart data mover asset. 
We realize that Smart Data Mover is not the only supported migration pattern approved by MongoDB. Alongside our work developing the Smart Data Mover asset, you all probably are aware of similar migration components that leverage Informatica or Pentaho as the mover engine and user interface. As Accenture is tool agnostic, we support both of these alternative approaches if they're more appropriate for our clients. But with our Smart Data Mover offering, we chose to focus on the migration process and developer productivity instead of creating a commercial software product. As such, the Accenture Smart Data Mover is not a licensed commercial software package. It's instead an asset we provide to our Accenture or client delivery teams to help make data migration projects more efficient and cost effective. We're very flexible in working with our clients to leverage these assets for high productivity teams. Accenture has invested significant work in building the tools in our Smart Data Transition Toolkit. If you're interested in learning more for your projects, please contact your MongoDB account executive and we can arrange a live demo and or a more tailored discussion to your requirements. Thanks for listening today. Have a great day and enjoy the rest of MongoDB Live.